Well, it, it, it simply put, there's a, you know, because of the abusive nature of the war on drugs type bureaucracies, there are a number of different options that police departments have had across the country since Occupy started to try to create problems for the movement. So here, uh, last fall uh, in Minneapolis, uh, they would definitely drop off people that were very intoxicated at the Occupy site. Um, and it was pretty well known in New York that the NYPD was dropping off uh, intoxicated people, telling them to concentrate essentially in the Occupy space while they were intoxicated in one way or another, or people that were known And by the way, that's not your opinion. I mean, in Austin, they admitted yeah. they were dumping upwards of 50 drunks a day, saying, we won't take you to jail, come here. They were drump dumping the mentally ill, everybody, and then yeah. saying, look at it, they're having fights. Well, right, exactly, and so, um, right, and there, so there were fights in the last couple of weeks, and there was there was uh, you know an allegation of a sexual assault, and so the question is, was the person who committed that sexual assault had they just been through that program a couple hours earlier? Because that would mean that all of these law enforcement parties were directly liable for that sexual assault, and and I think you can see how when this program is running, it really shifts the atmosphere in the whole space. It becomes a total distortion. That's why it's it's MK Occupy Minnesota. It's what happens when a, a government program with no oversight is rolled out. Um, and, and I think that uh, the reason that it has this nature that comes across in the video is simply because the war on drugs is so intrinsically abusive. It, tr it trains police to treat people like objects. Not and by the way, like treatment, not talk, treat with them like human beings, you know? I agree, but the, look, I've studied, and I know you have, MK Ultra, MK Naomi, mind control. Uh, in, in the late 50s, early 60s, the CIA throwing shoot cases of LSD and uh, mm -hmm. the University right. of Texas down the road and Harvard and Theodore yeah. Kaczynski was part of that program and mind control programs and 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 government uh, releasing the the uh, recipe for crack cocaine. That's all declassified. Mm -hmm. I mean, here they are. And these cops are compartmentalized. They're just like, we're doing a training program to see what drugs look like. Oh, give me a break. They're being taught to be drug pushers. This is outrageous. Well, and, and here's, if I can uh, back it up for a second, I think uh, the idea people should try to understand, regardless of their standpoint, is that we are all uh, enmeshed in a, a web of power at, at different levels and different ways and different assumptions we make and, and who we're linked to and everything. But when people uh, get flipped or taken over by the system, when they're turned into informants or peons or whatever you want to call it, um, it's happening because they're in a weak point in that web of power. And so here in the video, we can see people that are like far enough down that they that the law enforcement's being trained to get at them and then flip them over. And, and you know, that's essentially, generally speaking, I think the pattern that we should all try to look for. No, you know, no, it's, no, it's no, no. I think that's that the down. answer. Look for people they can provocateur and set up, generally assess them, create files on everyone, but find out who can be informants and provocateurs because now the cops are giving you cash, money, cigarettes, and cocaine. Yeah, and, and you know, I mean, it's it's been a rough ride with the Occupy movement. It's had its ups and downs, and I've been involved since the first day. But for at least one thing is that it's really flushed a lot of uh, abusive and shocking practices into the open. Like people, if we just were simply telling people about this program, they probably wouldn't believe us. But because we were able to document it, which anybody can do if they work together in a team, um, you can make it happen. I just want to add, too, that um, I did not you know, shoot most of the video. I essentially acted as kind of a coordinator, producer, interviewer. I shot some video, um, but this was a, a large project with a f uh, people from four different organizations, Communities United Against Police Brutality, Occupy Minneapolis, uh, Twin Cities Indie Media, and uh, Rogue Media. So it was a real good collaborative project effort, but I think that if we can encourage people to do similar efforts, we can expose- Absolutely, like and regardless and of regardless of people's political persuasion, basic liberty and freedom and the Bill of Rights, Constitution, due process, human rights is the tie that binds us all together. I want to go to this, I want to go to this first clip. Uh, let's go to that now.
right now. Yeah, so like, tell us the story. Like, so what happened? Like, you guys, like, the last thing we saw was you gave us a thumbs up. They didn't give us a test. They didn't test us this time. They just smoked us up this time. Where did they take you? What, like, what happened? They took us to the same place in Richfield. Whoa, right by the airport? Stop, man. Yeah, right near the airport, yup. And they were gonna do the test, but you know, like, because of you guys, we couldn't do the test because you, like, you guys were giving them trouble and shit. But they still smoked us up, though. <laughs> and then they gave me a ball, too, and we smoked on them forever. Wow. For, like, a whole hour. <laughs> was it straight? Was they it? was a whole bag of weed. And then we smoked it all up. <laughs> like, the entire. Like, yeah. Holy I shit. Have, you got half. Dan fight, uh, amazing video. Tell us what we just witnessed. Well, essentially, um, uh, an individual who uh, has been, you know, uh, around kind of the Occupy movement, the general scene, uh, he goes by Forrest. Um, he said that he went through the program uh, multiple times, at least three times, and uh, he was basically offered uh, free marijuana by the officers. And uh, the last time that he went through it, uh, uh, the officers were convinced that he was trying to basically expose the program so they wouldn't let him into the testing facility again, but they did, he said, smoke him out for an entire hour. Um, and then when he came back to the Occupy site, like he was uh, in incredibly, uh, you know, high and uh, acting, you know, a little crazy, climbing up on signs and laughing about things and stuff. And so that shows, uh, I mean, pretty clearly, uh, and, and, I, and I do commend him for, uh, being willing to go forth and discuss this and be open about his identity. He went and told the city council uh, in Minneapolis yesterday uh, in person about what had happened as well. So um, it's imperative that we find people that are willing to step forward and, and show how this works. But but essentially Forrest says, he, you know, that he was intoxicated when the police gave him drugs and he was sober when he left. And when he came back, he was very, very messed up. And that's incredibly unethical, if not illegal. And we're going to play, oh, it's totally illegal. We're going to play a clip of that right now. But when we come back, I want to ask you the question. Well, I'll ask that question when we come back. Here's that clip at the city council. My name is Forrest. Uh, I'm here with Occupy. I'm not going to tell you my address, but I live near Potterhorn Park. Um, I'm here to speak about, because everybody's been talking about it, the police and the sheriff. They, yeah, I'm one of the persons who got taken away. They gave me a full bag of weed, and they gave me a, a pipe to smoke it out of, and they just took us out to, I forgot the name of the airfield, but it's somewhere in Richfield, out near this bus line, 66 in Cedar, and they let us smoke it on those uh, sand hills where the dirt pits were, and um, I've done it three times with them, over three times with them, throughout this week and last week. And uh, basically, I asked them, like, why they're doing this. And they say it's because we're trying to test people to see if we can catch people under the influence, you know, for signs, dilated pupils, all that, and uh, smell. They gave me a urine test. But when I asked them, like, um, is this going to be on record or anything? No, they said nothing about that. And they gave me a fake name and everything. So I don't know what's up with that. And also, um, the second time I went, yeah, I asked some friends to come along. And um, the second time, there was actually, like, media and press. Uh, I think it was Sam, the shorter Sam, um, was there filming it. And Ben was there. And Dan was there. He got really angry when they took me away from the Hockey Pie movement. And they were kind of getting into an argument, conversation with them. Because he, he wanted to know why the police were doing this and why, why this was going on. And, yeah, I... I thank you for that man standing up for me and all the people for Occupy about the police and how. Yeah, I'm one of the only ones, but I have a lot more friends who have done this who can speak even more about this. So, what's going on? My issue is I drive up to checkpoints, or I've had cops pull me over and say, Are you on drugs? And I'm like, look, I don't use drugs. You know, I don't, I don't use prescription over the counter, any of it. I may drink a beer or drink some coffee. No, you're not going to search my car, get a warrant. But my issue is next time cops pull me over, I'm going to say, hey, what have I got drugs? Take me to your compound. Give me a bunch of drugs. You know, I mean, how do they selectively take some poor teenager to jail, uh, like so many friends I had in high school, and then ruin their lives and put them in juvenile where they get raped or whatever, you know, for a nonviolent crime, because drugs are so bad. But then mm -hmm. meanwhile, they're taking people and offering them whatever drug they want. I mean, this is crazy. 
Yes, and and I would stress like we weren't able to collect you know direct video evidence of that happening. We have but we have testimonials from multiple people that all line up along those lines. And it, but we it know the program's the real. I mean, they admit yeah. they have the program. Yeah, yeah, and it, and it speaks to you know the inherent corruption and dehumanizing nature of the war on drugs as a system, which has to be shut down. Is it's it's unbelievably cruel and unethical. Not to mention an enormous waste of taxpayer money. There are multiple layers to this story, apart from the fact that it works out being a huge political interference drug thing against Occupy, but also that it's uh, it, an expression of how incredibly dehumanizing the whole thing is uh, across our society. Now, we've got another clip. We showed the video earlier, but here's the audio where you confronted the sheriff. Uh, tell us when this happened. Um, yes, that was uh, on Saturday afternoon. Um, that sheriff arrived. Uh, we, you know, we kind of show him uh, getting out with the state patrol. Uh, he was from Olmstead County, which is an outstate county. And um, I was able to basically uh, get him to talk about who the director of the program was and the fact that there was no institutional review to uh, protect the interests and safety of these test subjects. So he's and out he of his jurisdiction from another yeah. county taking people to use drugs. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's, he's uh, you know, it's across, uh, it's a, a whole, uh, it's a whole program that runs across the state. So, so it's um, another way to merge and get rid of jurisdictions. Incredible. Here's that clip. Do you have adequate medical personnel in any of the facilities where this is being done? Everything that we do is completely validated. Okay. It's being run by the Sounds state good. patrol? Yep. Oh. Okay, Department who's, of who's the safety. officer? Okay, Department of Public Safety. Who's the officer in charge? Why do I have to tell you that? Who are because you? Because you're spending our tax dollars. Who are you? Who are you? Well, he's a citizen. Right? And like N. Jacobson from the Olmstead County. Right, I know. Yeah. Sir, N. Jacobson from the Olmstead County Sheriff's mm -hmm. Department. I, I, okay. I've talked with so, Adam before. Yeah. Well, we need to know who's running this program and whether or not adequate medical you. or ethical safeguards yeah. have been put in. The, so yeah. it's the state patrol, but you can't tell me the name of the officer running the program? The coordinator for the state. His name is Rick Munoz. He's a sergeant with the state patrol. Okay. It's called the it's it's called the DRE program. DRE. You can look it up. Drug recognition evaluator. Okay. Yep. You can look it up on the internet. It's actually a national program. Okay. There do. Yep. And there actually are medical personnel available when this is going on. Yes. Yep. Okay. Where where do those medical personnel work? Where do they work? Yeah. Where are they with? Well, we're stationed out of Richfield, so it'd be the nearest ambulance service. Richfield. Yep. Okay. So next to the airport. Okay. West side what's, of the airport. What's the facility where this is being done at the airport? Cars. The airport. It's the Department and of Transportation. Okay. We just look for a garage. It's it's a bit just a big garage. Is all it is. Okay. It's where we can just do our, the testing. Simple. Before we go to this next clip of another person who leaves sober, comes back out of their mind, stoned on something. Um, tell us about uh, any other comments you've got on the sheriff discussion. Oh, um, well, I also asked that sheriff, you know, I said, well, who is responsible for the impact of financial corruption from the war on drugs prohibition? And I said, you know, that essentially there's issues with drug money being laundered through the banking system. And he said that that was above his pay grade and that he didn't know who to talk to about that. So I haven't been able to find anybody in the Minnesota state government who will go on the record about the issue of financial corruption. This is another example of that. The only politician who's ever given me a substantial on the record explanation of laundered drug money in the banking system is, of course, Ron Paul. That's right, and he won the first few states, but they stole it from him, and now they admit they yeah. stole it, but that's the way it is. Mitt Romney, yeah. another big banker, he'll save us. Yes, but, you know, i got to hand it to the Ron Paul organizers in Minnesota. They've done a really, really good job rounding up delegates, and they're bringing Santorum people into their camp, so there's still some kind of game afoot. It's been interesting to watch, and hopefully that will Oh, help I agree. They're the planning issue. on creating a big fracas and, and, and just pointing out what a fraud it all is at the convention. And I think it's a great strategy. Even though they've cheated Paul up front, he would be the nominee. He won the first few states. But they just they just stole it because they're narcotics trafficking banking dictatorship. I mean, yeah. what do you... I think there's a new electronic voting system company from, what is it, Spain, that's going to be in this election. So hopefully... Yeah, they're going to count most of the votes nationwide. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I also wanted to touch really quickly on um, the upcoming NATO summit, if we have time for that right yeah, now. Yeah, I want to get to that, and I want to give you the floor for about 10 minutes, because I just wanted to go through all these points. When we come back from this last clip of another young man who leaves sober, comes back out of his mind. Here's that clip. Hey. They asked me how much I had to smoke. Come on, how are you? They didn't answer anything. And then they asked me if I wanted to smoke more, and just stopped me on my tracks. Like, yes. 
And then what? And then I spoke to the cop. How did they? How did they? How did they go about asking you to come with them?